I'm going to do a quick rundown of the new control net features that are available in RetroDiffusion. So to start, here in Sprite, we now have this new folder called control net, and inside of that you have text to image and image to image. We're going to just start off with text to image because that'll be easier to show the features. So the first thing you'll notice is this update. Uh, I've actually changed how some of the UI works. So now it's a bit more compact than it used to be. And you've got all of your you know, prompt, size, all that here. And then on the second tab, we have some of the settings that were previously in that same area. Uh, this just helps you know, fit on smaller screens as well as just be a little more easy to access settings. But the control net settings are right here. So you've got these two buttons, which is open the control net menu and reset control nets. So we're gonna click this one and that opens up this new menu here. And this contains all of the information for the different control nets available in RetroDiffusion. Additionally, you can actually access this menu from right here in the view area or in help under scripts. So uh, we've got a couple of options for control nets. Uh, every single one of them has pretty much the same things here, just you know the names are different. Uh, and that is to load selection, which will just grab whatever's on the canvas here. In fact, I'm just gonna close this dialog for now. We can open it back up later. So if I were to draw like, I don't know, a circle, right? So we've got a circle and we wanted to load that in, we could select it and then we're here in the sketch control net and we can click load selection. Now you can see the image popped up right here, but it also said control net not enabled. Control net sketch has an image, but it's not enabled. Would you like to enable it? And so what that's basically just saying is, and we're gonna, we're gonna click enable here. This checkbox here is what determines if the control net will actually be used during image generation. And that's just so like you could store images in different tabs, you know, and not actually use them for generation if you want to play around with stuff or just, you know, moving around different settings. Um, so anytime you load in a new image, it'll actually ask you, you know, if that's unchecked, it'll be like, hey, do you want to use this? And that's just uh, to help, uh, you know, if you've got an image and you're expecting it to be used, you don't want to have it not be used because you forgot that one little checkbox. There's also this uh, pre-process image for sketch control net. Um, and this pre-processing, what that essentially does, um, each control net is expecting a specific kind of input. And pre-processing is usually the way you wanna handle things. Like if I were to, uh, let's just click select file here. And if I were to load in this, you know, you can see that that's, that's not really a sketch. That's just a normal image. So what we'd want to do is pre-process it and that'll kind of turn it into a sketch before actually running the image generation. I'm going to go ahead and clear that. Um, now this pre-process checkbox is enabled for some of the control nets by default and disabled for others. Uh, so normally for something like sketch, you know, you're just going to paint something on the canvas and then load it in and you don't really need to worry about pre-processing because it's just it's right there for something like depth uh, it's a little more complicated because you're not normally going to have depth maps and so we can actually just grab this image and enable this and we want to have the pre-processing turned on because it'll actually extract like okay where everything is in three-dimensional space and it'll give us that information in fact let's make a, a quick generation here We'll just use the depth one. Let's ask for a car, because that's you know that's already what we got. So this will, you know, go through the familiar process of loading up and generating the image and all that. And there we go can see we've got a, uh, a car in pretty much that same arrangement, that same view and perspective. And that's because we used that uh, 
depth control net. And so it actually pulled out the depth information and was able to use it for generating the image. And so we got a very similar perspective. Uh, we can actually clear that. Now, if you wanted to use something like a pose, let's just grab this dude, for example. So now we've got this guy loaded and let's say we want to generate an image of someone in that same pose. So we can just, you know, type in a man wearing a suit or whatever, and it will actually go through and use this pose to create a new guy. You can see it's a little bit different. You know, sometimes the detection isn't perfect. Sometimes the image generation isn't perfect, but generally it'll be about the same pose. Now, if I were to load an image, like, for example, let's load in the, the car again, right? And if we try to generate an image now, it's actually going to tell you no pose detected in input image. And that's because clearly there's, there's no person here to actually detect a pose from. So it'll just, you know, generate a generic image with any random pose that it thinks of. This is another one of those things that you want to pre-process. Uh, if you don't want to have pre-processing for depth images, um, uh, basically the, the way that it formats things is um, the brighter a, a color is, the closer it is to the camera, and black is like infinitely in the background. So white, foreground, black, background, that's kind of how you want to think of it. Uh, for pose, it actually uses something called the open pose standard. That's a little more complicated. Uh, eventually we'll have a tool for just, you know, being able to directly edit poses inside of a sprite itself, uh, which will be super cool, but we're not quite there yet. So for now, just, you know, stick to, to loading in images of people and, and running that through and all that. Now I do want to talk about the, uh, the sketch control net a little bit because it's super cool. So with the sketch control net, we can actually, uh, kind of just draw out the forms of things and get some, some pretty good images out of it. So I'm going to start by just, let's see, making a little sort of head shape here. That looks good. And then we'll put in some, that's a pretty big shoulder there. Let's just get maybe that. Yep. Some, some pretty normal looking person here. Maybe a little collar for the shirt, you know, their arms come in here, stuff like that. Uh, we want to add some, some hair maybe. Eyes. There we go. And we should be able to just take this sketch here, load that selection, and then we can go to control net and we can generate portrait of a man. And you can see that that portrait lines up pretty closely with what we drew there. So if I were to go back in here and generate, let's say we want four of these, just clicking save as grid there. So it displays a little bit easier. Now we can generate four of these, these portraits here, and they should be all in that uh, pretty similar shape. Yeah, look at that. Yep, they all pretty much fit with that uh, that original form. This one, the angle changed a little bit. You can see, you know, it's it's pretty consistent. Another cool thing we could do is, you know, now that we have these portraits, I'm actually going to grab this one, and we can load that right here. We can actually pull the depth from this portrait and use the sketch from this one to create even more variations. And this will just, you know, 
hopefully keep that uh, that side angle thing from happening a bit. Yeah, and you can see now all of them have that you know pretty square jaw and these little uh, collar details because it pulled that out of the depth map. So there's a lot of really cool ways to uh, to use these these different tools, and you can kind of mix and match them together to get different effects. Uh, one that I really like is this composition tool. So if we were to load, let's see, let's grab this file here. So now we have this, you know, composition of this dude standing. You know, he's holding this staff. He's got some some meteors in the background, um, and we can actually generate a uh, a new image based off of this. And in this case, I'm going to just do a knight in a field. And I actually want to turn up the strength on this control net a little bit. So now we should get, yeah, there we go. You can pretty clearly see that it's a, a very similar composition to that image that we put in. You know, it's even got the dude standing kind of in the same way. It's got the staff there. It's even got some of these poofy clouds in the distance. Um, so this composition control net is just a great way to take existing images and kind of use the, the shapes and forms from them and turn them into new images. That pretty much covers everything having to do with control nets in this new update. And uh, I hope it enables you all to make some pretty cool stuff.